I want to go quickly to the White House, where in an unprecedented move, CNN correspondent Caitlin Collins was actually banned from a late afternoon press event in the Rose Garden because the White House simply didn't like the questions she asked the president earlier in the day. Uh, Caitlin, uh, you were the network pool reporter representing the five television networks when you asked uh, the president about that secret audio recording that the president's former lawyer, Michael Cohen, made of them discussing a hush money payment to a Playboy playmate who allegedly had an affair with Mr. Trump. Tell us precisely what happened, because it's very, very worrisome. Yeah, that's right, Wolf. So I was blocked from attending an open press event here at the White House because the White House did not like the questions I posed to President Trump earlier in the day during an event in the Oval Office with the President of the European Commission. So to walk you through exactly what was going on, I was representing the rest of the television networks during this uh, spray, which is what we refer to it here at the White House, in the Oval Office. We were brought in to, for the top of the meeting between the President and the President of the European Commission. Both men delivered remarks, and then I and several other reporters started asking President Trump questions. This is a normal occurrence, and it is often our only chance to ask President Trump questions that day, and he often responds to us, Wolf. So to give you a sense of the questions that the White House did not like that we posed to President Trump, here they are. Did Michael Cohen betray you, Mr. President? Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. Mr. President, did Michael Cohen betray you? Thank you very much. Sorry about that, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Mr. President, are you worried about what Michael Cohen is going to say to prosecutors? Thank you, Caleb. Let's keep going. Are you worried about what is on the other tapes, Mr. President? Thank you all. Let's keep going. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much, everybody. Why has Vladimir Putin not accepted your Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Let's go. Come on, guys. Thank you very much. We're done. We're done. Let's go. Why is Vladimir Putin not accepting We're done, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, Wolf, the questions I asked, in case you couldn't hear them, was if the president was upset and felt that Michael Cohen, his former attorney, had betrayed him by allowing the release of that audio recording. We also asked if he was worried about what Michael Cohen would say to prosecutors. As you know, the president was tweeting about that recording with Michael Cohen just this morning on his Twitter account. And then I also asked the president if he, uh, why Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, had not accepted his invitation to the White House yet. That was before the White House announced that they were going to postpone that meeting until next year. Now, Wolf, after that event was over, the president did not answer questions. He said, thank you. We left the Oval Office. And then later, I was called into the office of Bill Shine, the president's latest hire, who is his right-hand man for communications. It was him and the press secretary, Sarah Sanders, who told me that I would not be invited to an open press event here in the Rose Garden moments later at the White House because they thought the questions that I posed to President Trump were inappropriate and inappropriate for that venue. I told them that is often our only chance to ask the president questions. Those questions were questions any reporter would have asked and I was there to represent all of the networks and therefore ask about the questions of the day along with the other reporters and my colleagues in that room. Because of that, the White House blocked me from going to an open press event here at the White House that all reporters are allowed to go because they did not like the questions that I asked President Trump about the news of the day, Wolf. It's truly shocking. Uh, you know, it's, it's really unheard of. I've never heard of it. This is an open event. You're an accredited White House correspondent. Earlier in the day, you did precisely what you were supposed to do, representing the five television uh, networks. You, sh you asked a question, you sh asked a couple of questions, others did as well. That's what happens at every photo opportunity. The White House knows this. But then what is truly shocking, they reprimand you, they call you in for this meeting with Bill Shine, the Deputy White House Chief of Staff in charge of communications. And then he does something I've never heard of, and I was a White House correspondent for seven years. He blocks you because of what you did, which was legitimate journalism, he blocks you from attending an open event in the Rose Garden simply because you asked questions they didn't like. It's, it's truly shocking to hear that. And I think all of our colleagues, anyone who has ever served as a White House correspondent, I don't think anyone's going to remember a time where they block an accredited White House correspondent from a major news organization in the United States from attending an open event in the Rose Garden. So what's been the reaction since then, Caitlin? Well, Wolf, we haven't heard anything else from the White House. We did send some CNN photographers and other reporters to that briefing, but they said I specifically, or to that press conference, uh, that open press availability with the president, but they said I specifically could not go 
into that press conference. We have not had any other press availabilities here at the White House today. There was no White House press briefing with any of the press secretaries to take our questions uh, in a public setting here in the briefing room where I'm standing now, Wolf. And I was simply just uh, doing my job, asking questions of the president about the news of the day, some of the things the president had al already remarked on and then would make news on later when he did issue that statement through the National Security Advisor, John Bolton. But clearly the White House was not pleased with yeah, those questions we had for the president go. today. And at that open that event uh, in the White House, which we have first had coverage of that, the president didn't take any questions either. When he was done with his statement, the president of the European Commission was done with his statement. They simply walked back up the stairs towards the uh, Oval Office. Uh, uh, that's the president's right. Uh, he doesn't have to answer questions, but journalists are there to ask questions. That's what's happened for years and years at the White House, and this is truly pretty shocking that the White House would bar an accredited White House correspondent from an open event as they did for you and I assume the White House Correspondents Association and the network bureau chiefs here in Washington are filing formal complaints with Bill Shine and others at the White House. This is not supposed to happen this way. It's truly outrageous. Uh, Caitlin, thank you very much for your excellent, excellent work over at the White House. I want to get some more on all of this. Uh, Democratic Senator Richard Blumenthal of Connecticut is joining us. He's a member of the Armed Services and Judiciary Committees. Let me get your quick reaction to what Caitlin just told us. I'm obviously pretty angry about it, but uh, you're a member of the United States Senate. Wolf, I am shocked and angry, deeply offended, not only as a United States Senator, but as a citizen of the United States, by this kind of very chilling intimidation and punishment of a reporter simply for asking a legitimate question. This kind of really violation of a reporter's rights is an offense against the First Amendment interests of all of us. And it is public property. It's not Donald Trump's personal home or place of business. It really is a source of information that all of us need and deserve. And these questions are legitimate. Uh, I am really very deeply offended. Yeah, I mean, it's something you would expect to see in some totalitarian regime. And I've traveled with presidents around the world at photo opportunities uh, uh, that uh, the, the, the host government wasn't happy that White House correspondents were shouting questions. They weren't happy about that. They would come to us before a briefing, uh, before a photo opportunity, say no questions allowed. And we would always say the same thing. Uh, they don't have to answer the questions, but our job is to represent the American news media and ask those questions. You don't like it, you don't have to answer the questions, but th this is something that's not supposed to take place here, especially at the White House. We are the greatest nation in the history of the world because we have the Bill of Rights, and one of those rights is the First Amendment. This kind of misconduct raises very severe First Amendment issues, and I intend to pursue them. Yeah, I would like to see uh, Bill Shine, the Deputy White House Chief of Staff in charge of communications, who reprimanded uh, Caitlin Collins, uh, I would like to see him formally, publicly apologize to her for, for what he has done. I don't know if he was ordered to do so by the president uh, or if he just did it on his own, but that is simply unacceptable and there has to be an apology and to Caitlin. And, and, that, and remember, Caitlin wasn't just representing CNN, she was representing ABC, NBC, CBS, and Fox, all of the uh, television networks. She was the pool reporter on this day. She was doing her job they should know better. And that's why I'm saying it's more than about her personally, even if she may have been personally offended. And it's more than about those networks that were represented by her in a pool. It's about the American people's rights to see and hear and ask questions through her yeah. of the President of the United States. This is an attack on the free press, and it's a very serious issue that they have to fix quickly.